Hi, welcome to Math as a Language. Today's topic is one that we believe is very nice in terms of uh, lending itself to the uh, concept of math being a language. Uh, and uh, we're going to take a look at today's topic uh, on, on two levels. First, an intuitive level that we think we, we all understand and before we get into the more precise mathematical definition of, of the topic. And, and that topic, in fact, to get right to it, is the concept of a function. So we're going to learn today uh, to represent uh, functions to represent functions. All right, represent functions. Uh, so as we said, I think we all on an intuitive level have an idea of what it means to function. Okay, so if something, if we talk about something functioning or it functions, for the most part, I think we all would agree that if it functions, then it would it works. Whatever that uh, job has happens to be, that that if it functions, it wor it works. Uh, so whether it's a car, or you turn the ignition in the car, we expect the car to start. You flip the light switch, we expect the uh, the lights to go on. Uh, if you if you push a certain button on a copier, we expect certain copies to to to, uh, to uh, come out. So uh, we have certain expectations. So if it works, we, we know that it works, and if it works, we know what to expect. So simply put, we know what to expect. And so, and uh, as we said, we're, we're going to take a look at an, an intuitive interpretation of this in terms of knowing what to expect and when those expectations fail and when something may be uh, not functioning uh, and, uh, and then before we go into the uh, into a mathematical definition. So uh, we're probably going to take a couple of days on this topic or a couple of videos. So uh, we hope that you stay with us and uh, let's let's begin here. Okay, so let's take, let's start uh, with this and I hope you hopefully you'll indulge us. So we're going to go ahead and uh, do this, and you may be wondering what what is he doing? And so, simply put, this is going to be our our version of a copier. Okay, not not the best, but hopefully it'll, it'll make our our point. So we have our copier here, something that hopefully it'll work. And uh, and of course we know that in a copier we have we have a, a usually there's a button or something where you can have your input element. Uh, you can put in tell in how many copies you want. And on the other end of the copier, usually there's a tray or something uh, at the, where the the copies come out. And so we'll we'll have this as our as our output tray, if you will. Okay. So again. Uh, Simply put, we have uh, things that we're going to put in here, and these are going to be our. We're going to tell how many of, of whatever item we want, and then we're going to have certain things come out, and so that would be our 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 output elements, if you will. Okay. So before we do that, let's let's go ahead and say, okay. For example, let's say that we wanted only uh, three copies, so we'd have three copies here. We'd push the button. Okay. So we'd push the button, and on the other and we would expect to get our three copies. There's one, there's two, and there's three copies. So we knew what to expect. We wanted three, we got three copies out. All right, let's try another. Let's say that we wanted uh, uh, two copies. Push the button, we want two copies. On the other end, the machine does its thing. If it's functioning, if it's working properly, at the other end, we should get our two copies. All right, now here's what's what could happen. If we were to push the button for five copies, okay, and on the other end, worst case scenario, let's say nothing comes out, we get no copies at all. Or another possibility, we could push five copies and we only get two copies out. Okay, that is to say that our expectation was not met. First of all, when we got the no copies, when we got zero copies out, that was a problem. And then when we got the two copies out, that that's the problem. And of course, the the obvious problem, of course, with the copy is more often out of it jams completely. Then of course, then then we certainly will have to call the repair person. Okay, but just to make the point in terms of something functioning, something. Uh, functioning properly when it works we know what to expect now when we say w we know what to expect it has to follow the rule if something's functioning too let's go ahead and make that point and we'll do that here so if something is function functioning if it's functioning then it, it follows the rules it follows it follows the rule it follows a rule
So it ha has to follow the rule. In terms of a copy, the rule for a copier is, more often than not, if you push the button, you expect that number out. You push two, you expect two. Here's where the breakdown came in. When we pushed a button for five copiers when we got the two, and then we got none, that was a problem. The copier did not follow the rule. So that rule, so in mathematics, it's very important that we understand that someone, something function, not only does it work, but that there is a rule element there, that it follows a certain rule. All right, and we'll talk more about that later. All right. So, but now here we're going to start getting a little more precise and and look at the this concept in another way. Now we 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 took the liberty of, of grouping these input element in that yellow circle. So we're going to go ahead and continue with that theme, if you will. And for this point, we're going to go ahead and have our input elements. The, the numbers of copiers that we requested, those guys we've said used the term a few times. Those those are going to be referred to as the input elements. Okay, what how many we want, and of course we have our copies that are generated, and we are going to group those guys in a circle as well, and those would be our output. Okay. Now again, this copier, for the most part, when you make copies, the the rule for the copier is whatever you put in, if whatever you request in the input on the button, you get that number out. Therefore, if you request three copies, then if it's working properly, we got three copies out. It followed the rule. If we wanted five copies, okay, we pushed a button, we wanted five, and we get five copies out, then that would be fine if it followed the rule. But what would be a problem is if we requested two copies, we only want two, and in one case we got no copies out at all, or in the other case we requested two and we got five copies out, that would be a problem because you notice that this copier is not following the rules as far as the rule for copiers go, which means that usually what what you request is what you get out, what you request is what you it generates, what you requested here is not what it generated. For this one input element, we got two different outputs. In one case we got zero and the other case we got five. Now so this would not be a function. It is not a function, okay? Okay, so it's not working properly. Now, uh, one last thing, and then we'll we'll certainly pick up on this uh, more precisely later. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and and, uh, and and say and state the rule for a function in a more precise uh, terms, if you will. And then we'll uh, look at more examples, many more examples of functions as as we go on. Okay, so these guys are your input element, and those were your output elements. And more often than not, what we can say about a function in terms of input and output. So if it's a function, we talked about following the rules. What we can say, we can term it this way. That is to say, for every input element, for every input element, for every input then we'll go ahead and color code this for every input we know that there is exactly one output there is exactly one output Okay, so that would be a more, a little more precise definition of a function. As we said, we're just going to take a look at an intuitive level of functions at this point in time before we get uh, into a more precise definition as we go on. So, in terms of representing a function, if we know whether it's a function, it has to work. And if it works, we know what to expect. All right, whether it's the light switch or the car or so forth and on. And if we know what to expect, we went ahead and used this diagram as a as a, a kind of a concrete example of something functioning when we pushed a button for three we got three out two we got two out the problem when it came when we pushed five and in one instance we got two copies in the other we got zero then that did not follow the rule as far as as far as copiers go so know that in functions and when you're dealing with function there is a, going to be a rule and more often than not we will we'll go ahead and just say it this rule uh, can be intuitive, but we usually this rule will be some type of, of formula or, or, or equation, and we'll get more into that in our next video. Uh, however, and realize that if the rule is not followed, as to say what the expectations that we have is not met, if we expected 
to in, in terms of the rule for a function or a copier if you want you push the button for five you want five you will push the button for three we expect three but we pushed the button for two copies here and in one case we got five and the other two that was not a function something went wrong and therefore this one input element gave us two different two uniquely different uh, output elements and that's why that was not a function okay because again in closing uh, for it to be a function every input element has there has to be exactly one output there cannot be two all right all right thanks for visiting we look forward to uh, picking up on this uh, topic of functions in future videos and uh, thank you for visiting and we look forward to seeing you in the next video take care